This movement is so slow and so methodical, it's almost uh, hard to tell that it actually is in the process of moving. But if you look at the very edge of the HTV there on the far left-hand side of your screen, uh, you can see that it's getting a little bit closer to the International Space Station. Paolo Nespoli is driving the station's 58-foot-long, 2-ton robotic arm as he continues to uh, drive this HTV toward the bottom side of Harmony. And on uh, Space to Ground 1 for Katie, Apollo, and Houston, uh, you guys have a go to maneuver to the ready to latch position from a CBM perspective. Houston copies. Hey, Terry, and you were talking on uh, Space to Ground 1 earlier. Do you want to stay on 1 or do you want to go to 2? Whatever you guys want, Scott. Uh, if one makes it easier, so everybody can. Yeah, let's uh, go to one. one let's, easier, so everybody can. let's. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's. Uh, let's go to Space Ground Two. That's better. Thanks. Copy Space Ground Two. Expedition 26 Commander Scott Kelly there talking with the uh, ground teams here in Houston and also so that the rest of his uh, crew can hear him. But uh, he was giving the go-ahead for the HTV to continue to be maneuvered to what is called the ready-to-latch position. This is uh, one of the steps that they will uh, work through as they continue to move this huge cargo carrier uh, inch by inch closer to the International Space Station. There's going to be 16 bolts that will hold this HTV to the International Space Station. Those will be put into position and uh, driven coming up here shortly. There's a good view of the hatch on the bottom side of the Harmony node. HTV basically uh, staring straight down the barrel of uh, where it will be uh, housed over the next few weeks. Beginning tomorrow at about 6.30 a.m. Central Time, that is when the crew will begin the process of opening up the hatch. There's a few verification steps they have to go through to make sure that there is a good seal in between HTV and the bottom of the station. They will work the transfer of all of the different internal cargo that HTV is bringing up in its pressurized section, which is that section you see there in the center of your screen. That will occur the first week of February. In between now and then, beginning on February the 1st, 
That is when this exposed pallet that is housed in the middle of HTV in the unpressurized section will be withdrawn using the station's robotic arm. It'll be pulled out and uh, maneuvered over to where Kibo's robotic arm can be used to grapple onto it and move it o over toward uh, Kibo's front porch, which is his exposed pallet. That entire facility that is on the outside of Kibo will be the home of the HTV's exposed pallet, while all the different uh, cargo parts that are being brought up on it are transferred over to the Dexter robotic attachment. All that transfer work will occur between February the 2nd and February the 4th. After that has been accomplished, that exposed pallet that came up on HTV will be detached from Kibo's front porch, moved back around to HTV and reinstalled, and it will uh, be uh, deorbited along with HTV at the end of March. This is animation of uh, what we were just talking about. This is the uh, exposed pallet being withdrawn from HTV. You can see there in the center portion of your screen, that is the biggest part of this entire cargo canister. An interesting point about HTV is that it is the only spacecraft other than the shuttle that can bring up unpressurized cargo. On that entire uh, exposed pallet, which you see there, are some uh, very large spare parts for the International Space Station. There is a flex hose rotary coupler, an FHRC. This is an important piece of the station's cooling loops. That uh, rotary coupler allows ammonia, which is uh, used in the cooling loops on the outside of the station, to be circulated out to the radiators, which rotate around the station. It's a uh, special joint. And there's also a cargo transport carrier, which houses a, a variety of different uh, cargo parts that will be installed as well. Go ahead. Terry, you want to make sure that we loaded the right overlay. We loaded CBCS visiting a vehicle. That's a good question, Katie. We're checking. And Katie, we are happy with that overlay. Copy. And could you remind us how to get the RTLs on the RWS monitors as well? Katie, that's under the USOS effector overlay. Happy to see you. We got a bunch of pictures on SSC8 whenever you want to grab them. Copy that, Scott. We'll go get them. Station no response, we're doing the mail sync for you now. Sir, 
Houston, confirm we have a go for step five, maneuver to RTLs. Houston, confirm we have Katie, you go for step five. Good work. This view gives you a good look at uh, several of the different solar panels that are located on the outside of HTV, which power it. There are 57 in total.